I'm going to hand it over to Deidre. Thanks, Danielle. Thank you for the invitation and an opportunity actually to connect. I can't see everybody's face, <laughs> but I feel like I'm around a lot of adults today. And so that, that, that is a great feeling. I also put on some lipstick and real clothes this morning. Um, and that helped me feel like I got into a little bit of a routine. Um, if you don't know United Inner City Services, we're the home of St. Mark and newly opened Metro Centers, which are both high quality early childhood environments serving children six weeks to five years of age with a strong focus on arts integration and fostering social emotional health and creativity in our children. All that starts with adults though, and it starts with our staff and it starts with our families and supporting them in whatever way we can. So it doesn't go unnoticed even outside of COVID-19 and this um, current crisis we're in that managing adult feelings is not an easy thing to do. And it's something that we have to keep on our mind and our radar on a continual basis. So what you're gonna see um, and hear from the team this is um, truly a team effort. I'm just the one charged with leading the crew. Um, these are things that we do on a normal basis and we're trying to learn to do those things differently, connecting digitally like we are right now, using phone and um, other mechanisms to, to remain engaged with our families as best as we can. Even if you don't serve or work with or have children under the age of five, what you're going to learn today, these are things that all adults can use regardless of a, if you have kids at home. And um, we all have quite a bit of feelings going on these days. So without further ado, I'm going to just tell you briefly who you'll be hearing from today and know that we're a resource for you outside of this call in whatever way we might be able to be. Um, you're going to hear from Teresa Brandt and Nanelle McAlpin. They are both student success coordinators. We believe in the positivity um, and the resiliency of our children. So rather than calling them behavior interventionists, while they spend a lot of time working directly with children and families on um, working through um, large and small feelings with children, whether they're withdrawn or aggressive, um, student success is a, a more affirmative title that we've given them. Also, you'll hear from Brianne Pegg. She is our art coordinator at St. Mark and has done a lot to help us um, integrate art also in our new center Metro, which we've not hired an art coordinator at yet. Nikki Christman was behind the scenes um, making all this happen and Jean Willis was um, a part of helping to promote things. So they are also, and I see um, at least one of our parents and staff, um, Shay on the call today. And so it's great to tune in with all of you um, and know that these resources are gonna be available um, later on as well. So, Teresa. Get myself unmuted here. So welcome, welcome. I just wanted to thank you guys um, for giving us a little bit of your time um, today. I know, I know. Sometimes we have to pick and choose what we give our attention to um, right now, and so I'm really grateful that you all are here um, and that you came to listen. So, so at St. Mark Center, um, I have a lot of different roles that I play throughout the day. Sometimes I'm, like Ms. Deidre said, I'm in the classroom. Um, helping and working with children um, with some of their big emotions. Um, sometimes I also work with teachers, um, whether it's coaching them in the classroom or um, learning opportunities on our professional development days. Um, at times I also um, have the privilege of working with parents, um, supporting them, leading them, giving them strategies, and just sharing success stories. Um, but what I will say is the one thing that we that I promote, um, probably the most um, largest message that I promote is that my state regulates their state, the person that I am with. Um, I can't help someone else calm if I am not calm myself. And so I wanted to tell you a little bit of a story. Um, the information that I was going to share with you today um, is going to come in just a couple minutes, um, but I wanted to share my own um, my own story of how I needed to really hone in on what I was feeling in order to help you all today and send my message. Um, so Miss Bree and Miss Nanelle and Miss Nikki and I, we all met yesterday. We went through our scripts of what we were going to talk about. Um, my plan was to go home, um, to check back in, put some final touches on what I was about to say. Um, I will say as I was driving home yesterday, I got a phone call. 
Um, and that phone call was that um, all of Missouri schools will be closing um, for the rest of the year, uh, in person at least, in the building. Um, and I will say that I knew, I knew that that was coming. Um, I thought I was prepared for it. Um, but when I, when I heard that, my heart just sank. Um, and when I got home, I went to try to, to log in and, and work on my message for today. And I realized that I wasn't, I didn't feel prepared and I didn't feel ready enough to put those touches on it yet um, because I hadn't yet calmed myself and, and resolved within myself. Um, and my own inner state wasn't regulated enough to help all learn today. Um, and so I just had to take a little bit of time for myself and realize and put a name to what, to what I was feeling. And what I was feeling was, was sadness. I was sad. I was sad for, um, for, for my own personal family. Um, we would have to continue to manage all of the different schedules and everyone working at home and going to school at home. Um, but I also was, was sad for my children. Um, I have older children at home. Um, I have three teenagers at home, 15, 17, and 19. Um, so we have challenges. Um, they're just a little bit different than they were when they were little. Um, and as I was thinking about them and all of this, um, that my my 17-year-old or our 17-year-old daughter, that she's not going to get to say goodbye to her favorite culinary teacher that's retiring this year, um, that she is not going to be able to wear her prom dress that she bought and she was excited for. Um, my youngest daughter, she made the soccer team this year. And she was named captain of the JV team. And they have all spring sports have been canceled. So, so I had to really honor that within myself, that I was sad for them and, and help them understand that it's going to be OK um, through all of this. And I still get emotional about it. Um, but in order for me to, as soon as I'm able to identify that within myself, then I can help and, and teach others. Um, I have a visual that I wanted to share with you all today, and, and I'm going to try to do that here. Um, and this will be um, uploaded in the resources as well. Um, so the, and, and I put some numbers on there for you. Um, when I had to think as I was going through a couple weeks kind of into the quarantine, and again, mind you, this is going to come with another story. Um, my family are storytellers. Um, so, so talking and sharing stories, sharing personal stories comes a little more natural to me. Um, and I kept thinking about as my children were either coming to me or they were having quarrels within themselves, um, trying to manage their feelings, their emotions. I was feeling unprepared. I was I was getting escalated myself with that. I, and I finally realized, I went for a walk and, and just sort of was able to understand just how stressed I was um, in our in our day-to-day -day lives. And so I was able to then realize that I was feeling overwhelmed. I was feeling overwhelmed with with emotions, I was I was very very stressed out. I kept hearing the word juggling in all of my thoughts, like juggling work, juggling all of the teacher emails, juggling um, their their school schedules, um, and I didn't really know what to do with that feeling of overwhelming. Um, and so I once I was able to put a name to my feeling, then I could put some boundaries on my responses. So I decided to change a few things. I decided to, to check my emails a little less often. I turned off the sound um, to, to my emails. Um, I actually went into my settings and I changed how, how much I get those notifications pushed to my phone. So I went out and now I have to search um, for those emails. And sometimes, once in a while, I'll do that even with my text messages. Um, when I have my phone on silent, it doesn't make a sound. Um, and that's intentional for me um, to stay calm and regulated because right now more than ever, our children need us, they need us. 
and when I'm giving myself to all of the other distractions that come with being home, um, I'm not able to give them everything that they need. Um, and I do, I do recognize that my children are a little bit older. It is sometimes easier for me to get away and have those moments to myself. Um, but I, I do remember, and it doesn't seem like that long ago, that when my children were little. And, and so I would just encourage you guys to take a minute, a um, minute here, a minute there, uh, put some headphones on. I see some of you have headphones on today and those are, those are fantastic. Um, just to take those little bitty snippets of time um, and be intentional about what you're thinking to yourself and what you're talking to yourself like in those moments. Um, you know, put a, put a dance song on, um, something to, to, to lift you up and have fun at. Um, I, and, and, you know, I just keep always coming back to that my state, my state as a parent, my state as a teacher, my state as an educator and as a coach, it regulates others, um, the other states as well. And sometimes, you know, we have to be, um, and, I, and also going back to all of the distractions that are coming at us at lightning speed right now. Sometimes we have to be a little more intentional um, with, with what we're thinking, with our planned response. And th that intentionality comes from labeling our feelings, making a plan, and then moving forward um, with that. And just remember, remember that how we talk to ourselves in those moments is how our children are gonna talk to themselves. My inner dialogue, how I speak to myself, whether it's inside my head or outside, and we all know if you're like me, Sometimes I catch myself talking to myself. <laughs> um, and, and our children hear that. They, even when we think they're not listening, they're listening. They're listening. So, so just remember that. Allow yourself grace. The same compassion and love and kindness that you are responding to your children with, give that to yourself because we're human and we are all going to get through this. And, and, and one day when this is all over, hopefully sooner than later, um, the bonds that we make right now are going to be even greater and more fantastic than ever. So I, I thank you for letting me um, letting me do um, what I've used for myself and how that's been relevant for me from the classroom now bridging into our homes. So I'm going to turn it over to Miss Nanelle McAlpin, and she is a student success coordinator at Metro. Thank you, Teresa. I am Teresa's counterpart at Metro Center and um, do the same sort of work in that particular center. Um, let's just acknowledge the obvious at first that this pandemic has caused us all to have, um, it's disrupted our lives and it's brought some stress and anxiety into our homes. And even though we all get it, these measures for quarantine are necessary. Um, it does change our whole <clears throat> world at home. And children really don't know how to understand what they're feeling or process their feelings. So today I'm hoping just to focus a little bit on children and um, what stress looks like for them. So, you might be wondering, well, how do I know if my child's you know, stressed about all the changes? Well, first they might act out. Um, it might look like them throwing the remote across the room and you know, stupid remote doesn't work or throwing a full blown tantrum. Um, they may just be having trouble sleeping at night, waking up a lot. And they might, um, well, I've heard this a lot and um, it's partly stress and just partly the nature of things that children can be very resistant to their parent being the teacher. Um, so some reason it's hard to, for them to give the authority to their parent that their teacher had, and they may just stomp away when it's time to do some schoolwork. Really, any change in their behavior from what it was a few weeks ago could be a sign that they're trying to struggle through and process the changes that have happened and they're feeling some stress and anxiety. So I have four tips for you today that might help manage your children's stress. 
Um, first, children can't always put into words what's bothering them, so they show us that through their behavior. So think of behavior as communication, and they're, that they're trying to tell us something um, that they can't put into words. Um, their behavior um, shows up, and then what do you do with that big emotion that you're seeing, or the um, withdrawal that you see? Well, it's especially important for children to understand that they are not just their feelings, that they are more than that. That um, they first need to name their feelings, as Teresa was saying, we need to do as adults. That's huge for children. And they may not be able to do that on their own. So you might help them, you know, you seem a little angry or you seem scared, you seem lonely, whatever you sense that feeling might be and help them embrace it and thank their bodies for that feeling because it's just part of being human to have those emotions. It's especially important for kids to understand that they are more than those feelings though and um, that they have something called, I call the inner self or the core self or your soul. It's something in us that can overcome emotions and we have to believe that about ourselves your children might need to hear you say that you think they can come back to being calm. You might say something like, hey, you've got this. These feelings aren't going to last forever. These feelings are just feelings. So you are stronger than those feelings. I know you're gonna come back to being calm. And then adult, um, sometimes the moment your children are having these big emotions can feel overwhelming for you. And you are not in a place where you can really help them calm because you're not calm, as Teresa referred to. Um, I just wanted to mention this little room, um, this little site I found on the web called Room of Refuge. You can Google it. It was created by the Center for Trauma-Informed Innovation. And when you click on Room for Refuge, it will play five minutes of relaxing music. And you can just close your eyes and Take deep breaths for five minutes, and then you just might be a little more ready to help your child recenter. I um, mean, just a little bit, my colleague Bree is going to share some wonderful creative ways that you can also help your, you and your child recenter, and I love her ideas. Two, to help children cope, creating a daily schedule can give children a sense of security. And I know it's taken me several weeks to figure out my new routine and my new schedule. So give yourself time to work through it and change it up. But knowing uh, your kids, knowing what's going to happen in the day, what's going to come first and next is going to really uh, soothe and calm a lot of that anxiety about their day. Um, children, especially young children, respond really well to pictures. So you might try taking, uh, you can draw pictures or you can take photos of them throughout the day doing these different activities and then make sort of a timeline and put it up on the wall or the refrigerator so they can see what the day is gonna look like. I'm gonna share a screen right now um, that is a little card that we use in our schools called the first then card. Hope you all can see that. And you can put whatever pictures you want in there. Um, it might look like first we're going to do math. Then we can go outside. And just that little snapshot of the moment, what's now and what's next can really help some children to um, accept what they are about to do. Three, not going to school is a really big change. Uh, for kids, that's a whole new world they've never experienced before, and they don't have the coping skills that we have as adults. It will really help alleviate, if I might say, it will alleviate a lot of stress if you will try to implement some of the same practices that you do on any other day, like before the crisis occurred. Um, get up, have breakfast, shower, shave, get dressed, get your kids dressed. Um, whatever would have been your normal, make it look like you're going to work and going to school. Um, this really does help everyone get into the school mode. And just a fun little idea for your youngest children, um, putting some chairs together and pretending it's a car. You can drive to school 
And at the end of your activities for the day, drive back home. This is a cute idea that they'll, I think, love. Three uh, or four, and lastly, breathing exercises are valuable for everyone. Knowing how to take deep breaths from your belly and most of all, help those young children know how to take deep breaths because they might not get that. Here's a little tool that we um, use, and it is a pinwheel with a flower glued on it. So we would show children to breathe in through your nose, breathe out through your mouth, and that helps them understand. Or you can pretend to blow up a bubble, breathe in through your nose, breathe out through your mouth. Most of all, be kind to yourself. This new normal isn't going to be perfect every day. Um, if today looks like a really big mountain you can't climb, just climb a hill and give yourself a little grace. I'm going to turn it over to Bree now. Well, thank you, Nanelle. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Bree, and I am the art coordinator for UICS. Um, I work a lot with Teresa and Nanelle um, at St. Mark and Metro Center. Um, primarily St. Mark, and provide art experiences for the kids, and I would do my best to tie in social, emotional, health, and wellness for the kids um, in our art activities, too. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit today about how we can use creativity as a tool during moments of upset to de-escalate and redirect our children, um, but also for ourselves to help get them or us back on track. Um, I want to build on the information that Nanelle and Teresa provided and explain how creativity, um, how it can be used as a tool to regulate our emotions um, or our children's or both. And we can help our ch children regulate or calm their bodies down and handle their emotions productively only, like Teresa said, if we are calm and regulated first. Um, and our feelings are equally as important in this process. Um, so. I want to start by telling you guys that switching gears in um, hard moments or moments of upset can sometimes feel like too big of a task. If um, I think the easiest way to navigate is to build this time in our day. So kind of like Nanelle was saying, um, routine is really important. And if you can notice or identify the parts of your day that are the most challenging, um, you can layer in some intentional time for creativity in advance, and we can help ourselves, and we can help our children stay accountable and stick to our routines. Um, like Teresa and Anel said, we cannot always predict when we're going to encounter challenges, so as, as much as we try to layer those things in intentionally, things are going to happen. Things are going to happen that we can't expect, and um, when we have to cope with those, it's really important to name your feeling. Like Teresa was saying, you might be feeling sad, or anxious, or um, you might be like me right now, a little nervous. And whatever it is, if we can label that, then we can navigate it intentionally. We can um, choose a creative activity for ourselves or for our children intentionally that might be helpful. So I want to continue by sharing um, some of the activities that I might do with our kiddos if they're having a hard moment, or um, that I might do myself if I'm having a stressful day. Um, if you guys or if your kiddos are feeling antsy or anxious or if maybe you're trying to do homework and they're combative or wiggly or distracted, which is bound to happen because they are children and they're not built to sit still, um, we might need to move our bodies. So if our bodies are not calm, we can't expect our brains to be calm. Um, we need to expel that energy in a healthy and a productive way and it might be time to um, stop and take a walk or do some yoga if you're comfortable with that. Um, you might go outside and draw and play some hopscotch or have a little dance party, a little dance break. It's a good way to move and wiggle about. And then um, something I like to do with the kids, we like to put on a puppet show maybe with some stuffed animals or um, if I'm at school and they're having a hard time focusing or I'm trying to read a book instead of just reading to them, we might act it out with our bodies while I read it. Um, there are ways to physically engage and still teach what we're trying to teach and get through what we're trying to get through. Um, so that's good if we're feeling like we have lots of energy, but I think what I'm experiencing most during this, and I think um, 
probably a lot of our children are experiencing and a lot of you are experiencing feelings of sadness or being withdrawn or maybe uninterested even, bored, um, missing friends and family. Uh, this might be time to really intentionally reconnect and you can use creativity to do that. If we are not able to see our support systems or rely on our usual comforts, we might need to experience something a little more joyful with someone we care about or create something intentionally for somebody that we care about. Um, this is a really good time to maybe make a card for somebody that they love and put it in the mail or write a kind note on the sidewalk with chalk. Um, that always makes me feel good. I was doing it yesterday at work. Um, or maybe it's just time to put on some relaxing music and draw or write in a journal and just be a little more introspective and kids need that time to to kind of reflect and and, and think. Um, so I think those are some good things that you can you can start with. Um, another thing is we might just need to go outside and experience some sunshine and blow bubbles and um, just be together. This is a really good time to bond over shared experiences with your children. Um, when we give them love and support or when we give love and support to others, we often feel more loved and supported. And um, when I feel more loved and supported, I feel a lot more capable of handling whatever I have on my plate. So um, I think like Teresa and Anel are saying that connection piece is really important. So um, just doing things together, whatever it is, is the most important part of all that. Um, and then Really for any of the feelings I was just talking about, or if you just need a break, which sometimes I just need a break, I just need to turn my computer off or put my phone down and um, never underestimate the power of a sensory experience. I know I was feeling a little nervous and right before we got on this call, um, I just went and grabbed some Play-Doh. So this is a perfect example of how you can use some sort of sensory experience to you know, calm your nerves or um, make yourself feel better, or just kind of turn your brain off for a little bit. Uh, sensory experiences with kids is anything where they're just experimenting or playing openly and using their senses. So sight, taste, touch, smell, sound. Um, obviously I prefer touch, so I'm squeezing this dough, but it might be playing with Play-Doh. It could be baking together and letting them measure the ingredients. It could be playing in the dirt outside or water, which if that makes you a little stressed because um, of the mess, then you could do something inside that's a little maybe more clean, like mixing a little food coloring in their applesauce and letting them um, eat something that's just a little more exciting that day or um, playing with shaving cream in the bathtub where you can easily wash it off. It doesn't have to be stressful for you to, it doesn't have to be a big production. It can just be something different from their usual their usual routine. Um, and, but it, it's also important to remember that just because it is a break, it does not mean that they are not still learning. Um, these experiences are equally as valuable as traditional learning activities and they, um, they provide kids with important knowledge of the world around them. So it, it is a break, but it is, it is intentional and it is valuable. Um, I kind of want to circle back and make sure I talk about choices. When it comes to redirecting our kids, I, I think with creativity, it's really important to offer choices. Um, it gives them a sense of autonomy. And uh, it's not only important for them to name their feeling and take a deep breath and try to physically calm their bodies if they're upset, but uh, offering some creative choices is another way to give them back some control. And I think during all of this, everybody's feeling a little bit myself included, out of control, and that can make you feel unsafe. And when our kids feel unsafe, they, um, they might, like Nanella saying, take that out and some of their behaviors. And you might see some things that uh, you don't normally see. Um, an example of something I might say to a child who is upset is, hey, it seems like you are frustrated. It's okay to feel frustrated. This is hard. So you're acknowledging their feeling you're letting them know that's okay. And then maybe like Nanella was saying, let's take two deep breaths or a bubble breath, um, or that's when you get the pinwheel out. Um, and then I like to then follow that up with some creative choices. Would you like to take a break outside together? Um, would you like to play with sidewalk chalk with me? Or we could blow bubbles, it's your choice. Um, and that giving them that framework to work within lets them have some control and some power back. 
Um, and they'll almost always pick one of those choices. Or if they don't like those choices, you can provide a different set of choices that work. It's important when you're giving choices. I learned this the hard way early in my teaching career. <laughs> don't give children choices that are not actually acceptable choices. Um, for example, if you, um, if you say, would you like to go outside and play with chalk? Or would you like to blow bubbles, but it's actually too cold outside and they choose going outside to blow bubbles or play with chalk, either one. Um, and then you have to be like, well, actually, no, that, that might re-escalate them. It might not go well. Um, so make sure the choices you provide are safe and acceptable choices for them. And you're willing to honor those choices if they select it. Um, again, it just helps them feel in control and safe and also self-sufficient. Uh, it'll make your day go a lot smoother. Mm -hmm. Something I want to cover too. Let me scroll down a little bit. Got my little cheat sheet here. Um, I have talked a little bit about how you can use creativity to prevent upset. You can use it to deal with it in the moment, but um, Teresa and Nanelle and I all kind of agree. I think the most important thing you can take away from this is you can use any of these creative experiences to repair after a stressful experience. Um, sometimes you can't prevent it. Sometimes you don't know what to do in the moment or you're escalated too, and it's okay. That happens to everybody. Um, but the most important thing is that you return and you repair with that child um, afterwards. And sometimes that looks like talking. Maybe you just had an argument and they stomped away and they might not be ready to talk or you might not be ready to talk, but you could sit down and get the Play-Doh out. You could sit down and trace each other's bodies with chalk and you don't need words for that. Um, and then, you know, you just be with each other and play together. And then when it feels right, you can revisit whatever task it was that was challenging you. Um, so I think that's a really uh, important takeaway from this. And then I guess the last thing I'll leave you guys with is just remember that checking out intentionally is a way for you to be able to check back in. There's a lot of research out there that shows, um, and I don't have it on me, but I've read about it. Um, there's a lot of research out there that supports the idea that taking a lot of intentional breaks throughout a busy day helps you become more focused and productive. It helps keep you and your children on track. So it's a good idea to take breaks for play and breaks for um, joy, I think, is how I like to think of it, uh, whatever that looks like for you. Um, and then just kind of to say the same thing everybody else has said, just remember that there's no right or wrong way to handle this time. We're all kind of facing our own unique challenges and it's really important to give yourself and your family a lot of grace and a lot of latitude and we are building the plane as we're flying it. I like that analogy um, and that looks different for everybody. So just allow yourself some time to breathe and play and create together so that you and your children stay connected and emotionally well. And that is all I have to say for today. I'm going to wish you well, and thank you for listening to me, and also turn it back to Teresa because she is going to demonstrate a breathing exercise for us. Wonderful. Thank you, ladies. That was wonderful information. Um, so I wanted to um, leave you all today with some ideas. Um, in our classrooms, in our homes, um, a great practice um, to put into your schedule or to use as needed is to have some intentional breathing um, prompts, intentional breathing exercises. Um, younger children, um, you can make it really fun, like Miss Nanelle was saying, doing the balloon. Um, sometimes um, I've been in a classroom before and this uh, little friend loved Frozen. She was a big Elsa fan. Um, and so we made, we just called it an Elsa breath. So you know, when, when they're um, getting the cold and she's turning, and so when on this spiral, she's breathing in together. And then when we like throw the cold out, that's the exhale. Um, so you can, we, we do Spider-Man breaths, um, in, in, inhaling, exhaling, um, really making it fun for them. Um, like I was saying, my children are a little older at home. Um, so we, they, they don't like all of the silliness in those kind of exercises. So. So we do some get home that's a little bit different. Um, and I invite you, if you all would like to, to put your hands up like this. Um, and I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna trace up. Um, when I go up, my, up, 
excuse me, when I go up a finger, we're gonna inhale. As I'm going down, we're going to exhale. And I will say I am intentionally going slow on the down because our exhale is the most important part of intentional breathing exercises. Um, also, when we're exhaling, um, I invite you, and we all are on mute, so you can make a silly noise as you want to, um, to make, make, a, make a noise as you exhale. Um, that does a couple different things. That makes it fun. We want our children to have fun with these exercises. Um, they don't know how important this is to our brains, uh, to their brains, to our brains, but it is vital, it is vital. Um, and the more fun that we can make it for them, the more they're gonna want to do it. Um, so each exhale, I'm gonna make a silly sound. Um, it makes it fun. And it also is um, builds in a little bit of mindfulness practice. Um, the more we pay attention to our exhale, the more that we are going to intentionally be able to draw that out and make and create a longer exhale than an inhale. So, so here we go. Um, let me turn it here. So inhale. It sounds silly, but I promise you they love it. So thank you. I appreciate it. I wish you all well. And, and thank you again for allowing us um, to take part in your day. I'll hand it back over to Ms. Deidre and she's gonna close us out. Thank you everyone for joining today. We hope that some of the tips that we've given you um, will be useful. I know I feel a bit more calm right now than I maybe have felt throughout the week, just the calming nature of their voices and also just being reminded they're nothing that we have presented is rocket science. They may all be things that you've heard and done before, but just the reminder of it, I think um, goes a long way in these times that we're in right now. And relative to adult self-care, two things that work for me is um, whether you are a religious person or not, the word Sabbath is something that just means rest. And so if you can corner some Sabbath during your day, you can even just schedule that with your kids as well, where this is our siesta time, our Sabbath time, where we're going to set a timer and turn that on and we're gonna just take a break and be still and maybe be in different parts of the house for just a little while. But the other is four, seven, eight breathing four breaths, um, taking a breath in for four seconds, holding it for seven seconds, and then breathing out for eight seconds is just another technique. It shifts your brain mentally when you do that. And so um, being more mindful is a critical thing. There are a ton of resources out there that, that you can um, hone in on. And um, we just hope that um, your big feelings are a little bit smaller and you got a few tips on how to manage the big feelings of the kiddos in your household. I think we might have just a few minutes. If you have any questions, I see that there are a couple things, um, a little bit more um, comments about um, the breathing tips. Um, and um, I think one thing with kids and also adults, all of us, when we're in the moment and our feelings are big, the last thing you're thinking about is your breathing and your breath is one of the most important things to redirect and channel your energy. And so just being thoughtful about remembering to stop and to breathe and to count to 10 is huge. So you don't hurt, hurt someone else or hurt yourself. I don't know if there's time for a couple questions or comments from anyone in the group. You can either type them or Take yourself off mute. Thanks, Ms. Shea. <laughs> I might add something really quickly when it comes to breath. Um, Ms. Teachers, you were talking about how it is, how it's so important in that moment to breathe. Um, when I became, because, because what, what, what we're all trying to do here is just to be more intentional and, and to, so then we feel a little bit more prepared when those moments of upset come. Um, what, what, what 
I was noticing in my intentionality of breathing is that when I was getting upset, um, I was holding my breath. It's not that I was like breathing shallow or breathing deeply or breathing faster. It's just that I was actually holding my breath. Um, I never would have noticed that had I not been intentional in thinking about what kind of breaths that I should be taking in those moments. So just something to kind of be aware of. I think that the thing for me as a, a parent, caregiver, grandparent, and trying to lead um, a team of educators is as adults, we try to control children's feelings and emotions, and we get into these huge power struggles, and particularly when kids are angry, and not just letting them be mad um, or be sad. Like, we want to, like, force them to get out of how they feel. But just think about when you're mad and somebody tells you, calm down. Like, oh, it's just agitating. And I see that most of us on this call are women. As women, we really hate to be told to calm down. It's very condescending and frustrating for us. That's how that feels for kids. When we try to tell them what to feel, how to feel, when to feel it. And the feelings are just the feelings and what they do with the feeling is the challenging part. And so, you know, just say, hey, you know, as was said, just saying, I see you're mad. I would be too. I know, I know you're frustrated. Um, so just try not to, because your kids, just like you, they're frustrated right now. They want to be at school. They want to be away from you as much as you want to get away from them. And um, right now, that's just not not an option and it's okay to just tell them I know <laughs> and um, not feel like you got to fix it. So that's the last word of the day for me. And uh, <laughs> a, a lot of vitamin D goes a long way. Amazing what happens when you just get outside and let the wind blow through your hair. Even if you don't have it, Jean. <laughs> oh, well, we all wish you well from our hearts. Mm -hmm. Miss Emma, I love your love your rainbow. On the other side of this storm, we'll be seeing lots of rainbows. Just continue to breathe through it all. <laughs> Thanks for hosting us, Danielle. Yes. Thank you to Deidre, Bree, Nanel, Nikki, Teresa. Thank you so much for sharing all your wisdom, tips, um, your heart, your emotions today. We really appreciate it. Um, we will be distributing a recording of this webinar out, so um, be looking for that and pass that on to anyone else. I think we all know someone who could probably use this 45 minutes um, of a reflection and thinking about how to manage our feelings. So um, with that, I'm going to go ahead and end this meeting, but thank you to everyone who participated, and um, we'll be doing a couple more um, webinars related to education at home. So be on the lookout for that. But thank you so much.